are you all doing? It's been a minute since I did a live and I just want to come on and talk about the hottest topic. There, There's actually a lot happening right now in the news and so it's so many things going on that I was like, oh my gosh, I really should make it a point to start somewhere because there are a lot of stories I want to touch on and get uh, people's input and feedback on. So welcome to Black Travelers Network channel where we are always ready to travel to a new destination. I am your host, Jess. <laughs> I hope you're doing uh, well this early, early morning, late, late night, early, early morning. Uh, there is, uh, as I stated, quite a bit happening in the news. So this is one of the stories I will be talking about this evening, uh, as you can see from the title of it. And, you know, some of these stories that are, have like really captivated me at this moment in time is, you know, there are stories that include a lot of travel messages, which is this story. Um, there's stuff happening on the African continent. There's stories about the Bahamas and Colombia and how dangerous they are. And by the way, if you have not checked out our video, I did a video over a year ago, a little over a year ago about traveling to Colombia and what's actually happening there and why travelers should be on alert when they go. And so definitely uh, check that out. Uh, but you know, there's a lot of stories to cover. And so today we're going to talk about the Fannie Willis hearings cause that has been true entertainment. And so of course, uh, this story about, uh, you know, Fulton County, uh, district attorney Fannie Willis is captivating the attention of a lot of people right now. And so for those of you who are unclear on where Fulton County is, is it is in the great state of Georgia and uh, Fulton County covers the Atlanta metro area and its surrounding areas. So uh, that is really important to us because we actually have a lot of our travelers, a lot of our community, probably a big chunk of the Black Travelers Network community that's located right there in the heart of Atlanta, Georgia and its surrounding areas. And so before we get into it, Today, if you appreciate the video content you see, do not hesitate to show your appreciation by clicking the like button and make it a point to subscribe to the channel. And uh, if you're looking at your screen, you will see that these are our latest trips that we have coming up on the list and so like I said forgive me because today is a struggle stream day I normally like to come on super prepared but it's so many moving parts y'all I'm not gonna even lie I'm not prepared um, but what I can tell you if any of these destinations attract you make sure you email us at black travelers network at gmail.com to add your name to our notification list regarding any of the upcoming trips that you are interested in being a part of. And uh, I will say that um, we just wrapped up one of our more recent trips. And so I'm excited about um, what's coming this year. And, um, you know, I don't really come on camera too much, um, but, you know, I'm going to come on. It's early, early morning. And I'm going to go ahead, ladies and gentlemen, and come on camera. You know, it's not something I do uh, on this platform very often. Actually, I do it more on the um, Instagram platform and the, uh, the Facebook platform. But when it comes to YouTube, I really enjoy the audio experience and so hello I, I hope you're well <laughs> i hope you uh can can see me uh i got a lot going on uh on the desk here and a lot of uh, setup stuff i need to uh really improve on my my setup and 
all of that and so i hope this stream cooperates with me because already i'm i'm starting to see a bit of an issue in terms of what i actually have uh prepared uh for today so let's see let us see um what we have uh to tonight and so again i i want to just preface before i go into this story um that i i spend a lot of time with children <laughs> my little my little uh, munchkin uh, nephews and so because I spend so much time with the little people, uh, you know, I'm really good about checking my language. I don't use a lot of profanity um, or raw talk. I'm very, very uh, thoughtful of those of you who are listening. And so I, I want to just give myself some permissions because right now, right now, uh, at this moment in time, it's after 3 a.m. Uh, so... There shouldn't be too many young people who are uh, awake. I know today technically is a holiday here in America. Uh, and so I know a lot of kids will, will be out of school today. A lot of uh, places of businesses will be closed in observance of the holiday. But, um, you know, it's a lot of drama leading up to this election season. And uh, this story that is in the news is like sort of like this precursor to to the presidential election that's coming up so i wasn't really paying attention to this story at all i've kind of like checked out completely um but after having listened to some of the snippets from uh the story you know i was very surprised by how much travel plays a role in this whole Fonnie Willis uh, hearing. So uh, I'm, like I said, live right now, late night. And um, because this is kind of like an adult topic, <laughs> you know, it's intentionally done at this hour. So um, we're going to get into some adult topics and conversations on uh, this one. So forgive me in advance if my language gets raw and colorful. And if you are easily offended by curse words, if you are easily offended by sexual sexual conversations, then I'm going to ask that you leave the live right now. You know, like I said, I'm around kids most of my time. Uh, and, you know, I'm, I'm giving myself some permissions tonight to be free, ladies and gentlemen. So let's talk about this Fannie Willis case. And, let me take a step back. Not Fanny. She says her name is Fawny. Fawny Willis. So let's talk about this Fawny Willis case and the intersection it has uh, with the world of travel. And for those of you who do not know Fawny Willis, Fawny Willis was actually elected as uh, the Fulton County DA back in and DA district attorney back in 2020. Now I encourage all of our folks in Atlanta to not vote for Fonnie Willis. And I'm just going to be fully transparent because there were some key cases that involved what to me was very clear hate crimes against black, black people, black men uh, to be specific that was, that had happened in Atlanta and I knew she was not going to go after those criminals who were, you know, clearly um, guilty in, in, in the killing of some of these black brothers. So I urged folks in Atlanta, um, and oh my gosh, I'm hoping that there's not a problem with the stream because it seems like there's a moment where it might be freezing. Let me know if if um, if every is everything working optimally or no, because if it's not, I may have to make some adjustments and come back. Uh, let me just do a quick check because I'm I'm trying to figure some things out. Let me take out this earpiece. Let me put in the other earpiece. Okay, if there's any little hiccup, 
with the live and how it's actually playing you can always catch it on the replay and usually the replay is pretty uh, seamless uh, so hopefully um, there are no issues but I, I kind of uh, noticed a little bit uh, out of my peripheral because uh, I have a, a, a camera uh, on the side of me that I have uh, where I'm able to see but back to what I was saying, I just felt like she wasn't really going to go after these criminals. And to me, her opponent had a better um, handle on the importance of these issues and the importance of pursuing the criminals who had blatantly uh, taken the lives of these uh, black men. I think maybe Ahmaud Arbery might have been one of those cases. And I just could tell by who was actually funding Fani's campaign that she was likely going to not pursue that as much as she could. And since she's been DA, you know, we can see where her priorities have been in who she's pursuing. You know, she's pursuing um, RICO charges against what rappers and gang members or, or whatever the case may be. So I just kind of, I, don't, I already saw that coming. Um, but, you know, the citizens of Fulton County, y'all decided. And, you know, we can't um, go against what is supposed to be a democratic process. And so Fani is the people's choice. Um, at least the majority of the people chose her. And we just have to respect that. Now, just to give you guys a quick recap, Fani is in the spotlight because she is trying uh, the Donald Trump case regarding whether or not Trump and his allies conspired over um, his election loss in 2020. Now, by doing this, Fani instantly becomes a target. You know, like the right wingers are going to come after her guns blazing of which they have. And this is the purpose of this hearing. So these hearings are they're kind of digging into whether or not she should be removed from the case. Now, I don't know whether or not she should be removed or if she should not. I haven't really formulated an opinion on that. What I can say is that they are digging into her personal life and her personal finances because she hired her ex-lover. Well, I say ex-lover at the time he was her lover, um, Nathan Wade uh, to help with the prosecution of the Trump case and Nathan Wade's contract basically pays him I think it's like six hundred fifty thousand dollars and there had been allegations that Nathan Wade and Fonnie Willis's relationship was happening during the time that Nathan Wade was technically still married so they are digging deep to see if she used government funds to pay her lover, if she's accepted any kind of gifts from, uh, from him or anyone else. Just a lot of things that they're kind of raking over the coals and going in depth to really discredit her because they don't want her on this case uh, trying uh, Trump and his allies. And, you know, it's all being done to get Fonnie Willis removed from the case. But, you know, we are here to talk about the travel piece of this puzzle and to ask the question, should women share the bill in love, travel, and vacations? And so that's the initial question, right? And I'd like for you to drop your comments in the chat if you're joining live and drop your comments uh, in the comment section on the playback if you have any thoughts about this topic. So let's start uh, and I want to hopefully I can get um, everything to work uh, when it comes to what I want and what I need to play when it comes to Miss Bonnie Willis. Uh, I want to get things going by playing a clip of Fonnie from the hearing. And um, let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. 
what we got going on here. I don't know. I don't know if it's going to play. Because I want the video. Oh, yeah. We got it. We got it. We got it. We got action. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Let me take myself off the screen. And let me let you hear from Miss Bonnie. Well, let me tell you our real trips. In October, we went with... Uh, we went on the cruise with his mom. We got back from the cruise with his mom and we went to Aruba. I consider that one trip. Second trip, New Year's Eve, we went on a cruise to the Bahamas. That's the second trip. I wanna make sure I get this right. Third trip, 100% on me. I think he might've spent $200 on that entire trip. Uh, we went to Belize. That was my trip. That was, you know, his 50th. And then Napa Valley, we went around May. I don't know the dates, but it seems to me like it was close to Mother's Day. And those are the only trips? Um, so that the record is complete. I can remember one time driving to, where were we? South Carolina, and we met my sister for lunch with her man. Um, when was we didn't that? Stay the, I don't know, but we didn't stay the night there, but I guess people would consider that a trip if you drive somewhere and you come back, that was insane because it was like five hours to drive. We ate lunch and we drove right back. Um, I can remember driving to some little town in Georgia. I don't even know where I was. Um, I had never been there before or after. There's some boat you can get on over to and they're like a slave thing. If that gives anyone any reference, we didn't do that. Um, I remember doing that. I remember driving one time to Charlotte. We had lunch with one of my very close girlfriends. And again, we drove to Charlotte, met my girlfriend for lunch, and drove right back. So that's a trip. We didn't stay the night there, but I just want to be complete in my testimony. We drove someplace, had lunch, drove back. Um, <clears throat> I don't remember another driving someplace distant for um, lunch and coming back to Charlotte to see a girlfriend to meet my sister uh, in South Carolina. We went by ourselves when I told you about that remote place in Georgia. We could have driven someplace else and had lunch and came back, but that's all that comes to my recollection right now. There could have been another place we drove and had lunch. My um, security team was very clear to me. I'm not to be out and about in Atlanta without them, and so, for me to do something just very normal that a normal person would get to do, if they weren't prosecuting this case, I got to drive four hours to do it. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, you heard it. They were getting it in all over the Americas. Well, I say all over the Americas, but, you know, Fani talks about how, you know, they were, they were in the islands and, you know, what did she say, uh, Aruba? the Caribbean, you know, well, yeah, because they went on a cruise ship, and, and this goes to show, you know, technically, technically, the brother was still married when, during the time all of this was going down, so I'm not a hundred percent sure that everything that was happening was totally and completely above board. You know, I mean, it's it's a little bit on the tricky side when it comes to this. And he, you know, Nathan Wade took the stand and he basically said that the, for those of you who haven't really been following, the nature of what was actually going on between the two of them was the fact that Wade's wife actually cheated on him. And she cheated on him with one of his very good friends. And that was my understanding uh, when the cheating happened. It happened back in 2015. And in his testimony on the stand, he basically said, hey, look, you know, I was cheated on in my marriage. And back in 2015, technically from his perspective, his marriage was irretrievably broken. And although him and his wife didn't go through the formal process of filing for a divorce. According to Nathan Wade, he was done in 2015 
when he discovered that his wife had cheated on him with his best friend. And so that's kind of the grace that everybody is sort of giving Nathan Wade and looking at this case, but it's still technically he was a married man. And, you know, I'm thinking about this timeline that Fonnie talks about how her and Nathan was going on all these trips. And, you know, I want to know, drop, drop a comment in the chat or drop a comment um, in the comment section. Do you think it was too much too soon with her and Wade going on all these trips? They done went to different parts of the Southeast Coast, you know, South Carolina, Alabama, Tennessee. They've gone to California, Napa Valley. They did a bunch of excursions around uh, the wineries and with the wine tours. So that was an experience that they had and shared together. And then they went on a cruise ship. She met his mother. I mean, it's just like they went to the Bahamas. They went to Aruba. I mean, they went a lot of places. And, you know, I think what we have to do is we have to, like, preface all of this. And I want to remind you guys that Fani is an elected official. And the reason why that's important is because she, she has to move differently than most women. And I say that because at any given moment, her personal finances can be brought under, scrut under scrutiny. They're already trying to figure out if he was giving her gifts or if she was paying him and how she was paying him and all that stuff. So she can't move like the average woman because at any given moment, for any reason, her her finances could be brought under scrutiny and she could basically, um, you know, she could lose all of this that she has if they feel that she's taking money or taking gifts and getting some sort of kickback from being in office. And so that's one thing to keep in mind as we talk about this whole situation and how um, she's, how Fonny's moving in, in, in terms of her interaction with Nathan Wade. So let's, let me see if I can get this other clip going. So outside of the vacations that we've already talked about, did you ever go out to dinner with Mr. Wade? I, I mentioned to you that I'm going to object as to what time period. Like we're, we're asking very vague questions. I thought we were treating the witness as hostile under 611. We're no longer doing that. So are we going to go back and forth? We need to be more specific with our questions if we're going to treat her as hostile. <laughs> All right, Ms. Merchant, it's not so much. I think you can elect between leading and open-ended questions, but I think we are still wondering about, and I think we need to get back on track of focusing on the financial benefit or the relationship. And my next question about if you did go out to dinner, who paid when you went out to dinner? He paid, I paid. You both paid. Uh, okay, so let me be real clear. We didn't say, oh, the bill is $102. You give $51, I'll give $51. I don't operate like that with my girlfriends. I don't operate like that with anyone. He caught the bill, I caught the bill. Whomever. Did you ever pay him through Cash App? No. You only ever paid him through cash? Well, yes. Uh, uh, we're talking about, I'm very confused You've now. never like, given Mr. Wade money through Cash App? No. The only money you've ever given him outside of a contract is cash. I didn't give him money in a contract, so that was cute, but I didn't give him money out uh, in a contract. What happened is, no, we're going to answer it since you said it. He worked. He worked more hours than he was paid, and the county paid him for the work that he did. So don't be cute with me and then think that you're not going to get an answer. And I will ask you about the contract in a minute. I asked you about cash. Did you ever pay him anything? And I'm trying to qualify my questions. I'm not talking about the contract with Fulton County that, that was paid. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about outside of that, did you ever pay him anything other than cash? I've only given him cash a few times in, in the course of what we're talking about. So you've if never we would go to dinner, let, him, let her finish her answers. If we would go to dinner, I wouldn't give him <laughs> cash because he paid for dinner or I paid for dinner. I've given him cash only a few times in life, probably four. Okay. Probably the most money I've ever handed him is $2,500, the least amount of money I've handed him probably between five hundred and a thousand dollars you never wrote him a check 
ma'am, I don't have checks. Okay. Um, so you have no proof of any reimbursement for any of these things because it was all cash, right? The testimony of one witness is enough to prove a fact. So my question you was, do you have I'm any proof? You? Is that what you're intimating right here? I'm asking if you have any proof that you paid him any I mean, of these The monies. proof is what I just told you. You have no written proof. Is that correct? So I have some, um, probably some transactions like in Belize. I probably spent $500 on my card uh, in Belize. I spent 800, I can't remember, 900 bucks on each of our tickets to go to Belize. I did the $700. I probably got some <coughs> minor expenses in Aruba that would be on a card. But for the most part for those trips, other than, so the two cruises, I gave him money for those before we ever left because um, they were pre-booked. Let me answer. Well, the, the, the question was if you had any written proof. And so so I've answered you that I've had written we proof. We can move to the next question if you've answered if we had any written proof, and that was my question. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, mm, what did you think about that line of questioning? Do you actually believe Fani is telling the truth on that? Because here's here's what we can't say in, in the courtroom, okay? Because the inquiring minds want to know, what portion of the trips, Fani, that you were taking with Mr. Wade was paid for in cash? And what portion of the trip was paid for in ass, okay? That's what we really want to know. Let's be honest, because at the end of the day, like all of this is 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 courtroom theater as far as i'm concerned you know that's really what she trying to figure out because she asked about checks which who's really using checks i mean I, and when i say she asked i'm talking about the attorney who was cross-examining fonny she asked about some checks funny like i don't use checks i mean how many of us are really using checks today like we don't really use checks like that anymore so i'm like you know let's stop bullshitting like we know what you what, what, what we trying to figure out like did you pay them in cash or did you pay them in, in in ass i mean like we just gonna call it for what it is and you know we want to know funny willis what portion of the citizens of Fulton County, what portion of their tax money was going towards you getting your back blown out in Aruba? That is the truth. Of Holla if you hear me. Holla if you hear me. As a woman, as a woman, I really hope she, she got it all the way in. But as, as, as the questioning develops, I'm sure you're going to find that, you know, we gonna see we gonna see what conclusions y'all come to but we gonna be honest tonight you know that's that's my whole thing because a lot of this cannot be said on the record you know clearly in the courtroom you know there's a lot of game playing a lot of semantics because a lot of this stuff you know it's just like come on now y'all are y'all are reaching but you know women I want to talk to the ladies real quick because, and to you, you gentlemen, because at the end of the day, we as women, we accept certain forms of payment. Okay. Some of us take cash. Some of us, you know, may take a payment through Zelle, you know, some of us are going to accept a cash app, you know, or two, um, it, there's so many different ways. Some of us take Apple pay, you know, some of us, you know, take a credit or a debit transaction. If you know, if you set up and you can accept that. So women, we tend to be very specific about how we accept payment, you know, and it, it, it comes down to what we are most comfortable with in terms of how we pay versus how we accept. Now, men, men, on the other hand, ladies and gentlemen, let's, let's talk about men because, you know, I love, I love my brothers. I love men. Okay. Um, cause y'all are so different from us. You know, women, we have limitations on how we going to take the payment. Men, my experience is men accept all forms of payment. Okay. 
Men accept Cash App, Zelle, money orders, checks, credit card, PayPal, cash, ass, pussy, titties, pictures. I mean, like, you can just go down the list when it comes to the men. Men accept everything, okay? <laughs> Different forms of payment, okay? You know, and I've had... You know, as I think about it, you know, just my experience and traveling throughout the world and kicking it and going to this event and that event, you know, I've had the cost of entrance to an event go from $100 to $50 to $20 to free just because I was wearing the right kind of shirt that night, okay? Holla if you hear me. So, you know, you are not going to convince me that Fonny only paid Mr. Nathan Wade in cash, okay? She may have paid some in cash, and we trying to figure out if she put in that work, uh, 15 minutes of work, or was it 20 minutes, 5 minutes of work to make up the difference in payment. But I promise you, ladies and gentlemen, it was not all cash that this woman was paying, okay? I'm telling you what I know, okay? And so I'm going to advance the conversation and we're gonna we're gonna uh we're gonna play the next clip and the the next clip is when Fonny start talking about um basically she signals to the 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 cross examiner's team that they ain't really technically asking her the right question and that she's basically signaling hey she'll tell more if, if they if they want to know She's willing to tell more. And so I, you know, it is very interesting. But Fonny came to talk and she did not come to play. Okay. Okay. You indicated your best recollection was that your relationship with Mr. Wade, the romantic relationship, uh, ended. Um, you left it in August of 2023. That sound right? That's the hard conversation. That's not the... Uh, We've covered this. Next question. And you characterize it as a tough conversation, correct? Yes. Okay. I'm not going to get into the conversation per you se. You should. Well, if he doesn't want to, we won't go there. So, Mr. Sedan, next question. <laughs> you know, it's kind of hard to say no when you've got that opportunity. But all I'm going to say is, it was it pre-indictment in this case? So we know the timeline that the indictment was delivered. Okay. Well, but, and, and, and so that we're so clear, the okay. physical relationship ended pre-indictment. And is that when you were talking about the tough conversation? But I, the, I'm not sure that the tough conversation didn't happen until after, but the physical relationship. So I'm sure if you ask Mr. Wade, because he's a male, he would say we ended June or July because physical contact ended then. Just in my mind, being a woman, it's over when you have that like hard conversation. That's I just think women and men think differently. Okay, you heard what Fonny said. Fonny said men and women we think differently. And how many of you agree? Drop it in the chat. Do you think we really do think differently? I I think that if you pay attention to how men move and how women move, it becomes very clear that we do think differently. Um, just in terms of like what I just said, just the many different forms of payment men will accept that, that we as women will not even consider. <laughs> we won't even think twice about it. Um, you know, it, 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 we just move differently. And, you know, in that particular clip, she's, she's talking about having to have this tough conversation because she ended the sexual contact with Wade prior to having the conversation. So she feel like, Hey, you know, she took that off the table and you know, they're no longer together. And he would probably say that now that may or may not be true. That may be her characterization of what she felt from him based off of her not sleeping with him anymore. And so it got real deep after this because she reveals some information at this point in the hearing that I didn't think she was going to reveal and I didn't think she was going to reveal it because she 
hinted at it earlier in her testimony and she said i don't want to say but oh honey <laughs> when she said she ain't want to say what was really going on out of respect for him i mean honey the, the respect went out the door because she she um you know she let it all kind of hang out and reveal some some intimate uh details about uh wade and so here is this in this clip i want you to hear what she said was um kind of like the reason why they broke up uh i i say it was the reason why they broke up but the reality is is it's just her indicating um you know just what led to her having the tough conversation the romantic relationship ended before the indictment was returned yes or no to a man yes well to a man yes to you no she, she's explained this right. say down. she's explained this <laughs> and did the and the did the forthcoming indictment have anything to do with that Ooh. or was it just a coincidence <clears throat> mr let's go on and have the conversation I just ask you whether or not it was a coincidence. It had absolutely nothing to do with this. It's interesting that we're here about this money. Mr. Wade is used to women that, uh, as he told me one time, the only thing a woman can do for him is make him a sandwich. We would have brutal arguments about the fact that I am your equal. I don't need anything from a man. A man is not a plan. A man is a companion. And so there was tension always in our relationship, which is why I was give him his money back. I don't need anybody to foot my bills. The only man who's ever foot my bills completely is my daddy. You heard Fonny. Fonny said she don't need a man for that. And I want to know, ladies, what y'all think about that. And gentlemen, you know, feel free to drop it in the in the chat uh, as well. Drop it in the comments. What do y'all think about that? Because you know, Fonny went hard in the paint on, on that part of her testimony and that she don't need anything from a man. That's what she said now. Obviously, she needs something because she ended up in a, in a, <laughs> in a situation, you know, that she's having to talk and discuss her intimate relationships. But, you know, it's like, I kind of feel for her in, in, in the respect of she thought that she had something with him. And I, it's not clear, it's not 100% clear why um, there was tension outside of what she's indicating, which is the tension came because Wade almost, it almost seemed like he want to reduce her to a chef or a cook or a homemaker. And, and I think she's highly offended because she's a very successful, um, not even just a successful attorney, but you know, she's the DA and you know, she, she, she made sure that his pockets were lined. And so for him to say that the only thing that a woman could do was make him a sandwich when she, here she is as a woman who she sees herself as an equal to him um you know we can talk about that level of equality however you see it or however i see it i don't know but without question she is the reason why he he got a six hundred fifty thousand dollar job if it was not for fawny that bag would never have come to Nathan. And so it's kind of insulting to hear her say that he's said that the only thing she could do for him is make him a sandwich because it's like, that's not really what you say when you cash in these $650,000 checks that you're getting for the work that you're doing. Okay. Because I promise she was doing more than I me. Mean, Fani was making more than sandwiches. Okay. And we're going to talk about how she was making more than sandwiches with this man, because here's the intimate detail that she did not want to discuss that I guess she got caught up in the emotions of the moment. And she, she kind of 
let it out let the cat out the bag um but here's here's what Fonny has to say um about uh nathan wade and why you know this whole hearing thing is kind of ridiculous and this is very interesting that she she let this out yes sir you had contact with mr wade in the tw year 2020 correct Ooh, um i had some contact with mr wade would you explain when you say some contact please tell us the con talk about 2020 I had some contact with Mr. Wade in 2020. Um, one of the reasons your allegations are so preposterous or Ms. Merchants that you have joined is- Ma'am, no, 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 I didn't no, no, ask you about the allegations. I asked you about your contact. That's all I ask you, okay? I appreciate that, that you wanna say something, but I'm interested in, did you have contacts with Mr. Wade in 2020? And your answer so far has been yes, correct? Very limited contact because um, Mr. Wade had a form of cancer that makes your allegations somewhat ridiculous. I, I do appreciate the characterization. I'm not going to emasculate a black man, but I'm, I'm just telling you. I'm that sorry, what? I'm not going to emasculate a black man. Did you understand that? All right, well, I don't think we should discuss further. Mr. Seda, next question. Trying to, Your Honor. Woo, funny brought it funny brought it in that last bit okay see now that at that point that's when it, it, so for me i read that in a couple of different ways okay because when they talked about when the attorney asked her about contact i'm thinking that you know he's talking about conversation meeting up whatever the case may be she's talking about she ain't gonna emasculate a black man so that leads me to believe that their contact was limited because he because of his health issues and it was basically at that point that i started kind of feeling bad for i started feeling a little bad for uh Fonny because you know mr wade had health issues and he was not, you know, in the best kind of condition, I guess, for her to have regular contact with him. And, you know, we're not going to make light of this because this is actually a serious matter. Um, but both men and women, when there's a health issue that arises, it impacts you both physically and mentally. So because Mr. Wade had serious life-threatening issues, it's a strong po possibility that the brother wasn't even able to get it up. You know, it, it, it's, it's sad to say that, but that's the reality of what, you know, terminal illness or a form of an illness that can be terminal can have on the body. You know, even after the road to recovery, the cancer treatments and the meds had a, you know, they have a lasting impact on a person's body. And so men at a particular point in time, I know a lot of people don't like to talk about this, especially men, but some men after they reach a particular age, if we don't even factor in any health issues, some have problems getting it up and once they get it up some have problems keeping it up you know like we all adults and and that's just the nature of what men go through so i just kind of felt bad for Fonny. and the interesting thing about that testimony is it almost in a roundabout way tell me if i'm wrong drop a comment in the in the section tell me if i'm wrong but it almost seemed like she somewhat suggested that if it wasn't no sexual contact between her in a way that her contact was going to be limited with him anyway because you know she started talking about emasculating a black man like that came from nowhere <laughs> like wait how did we get here you know what i mean like it just was weird and so i'm just wondering because she also said that's another thing Fonny said in her testimony and i don't have the clip but she said that nathan way was not her first choice okay and i'm like you better tell the truth funny because i hate to say it because i don't want to offend any guys who listen but the reality is most men are not a woman's first choice like most of y'all just aren't i think only in um I, when i reflect on my life okay 
I probably had one guy who was only like, no, I take that back, two guys who were my first choices, okay? And it's so funny because one of my first choices, I'm, ooh, he's still the first choice, okay? <laughs> but he won't give me the time of day, like he won't take my call, and I'll save that story for another, <laughs> I'll save it for another live, but most men, you know, when a woman is dealing with you, you don't know what number you fall uh, on that spectrum of choices. And so maybe the man that Fonny really wanted didn't really want her. Or maybe the man that Fonny wanted was married or, you know, it could have been any number of reasons why Fonny uh, ended up with Wade and he wasn't her first choice. You know, life happens. That's how things go. So I kind of felt bad for her because, you know, he was stricken with cancer and she said in the early or testimony that he almost didn't make it and so you know i imagine it looks like the brother is it has recovered and it has pulled the pieces to his life back together and so shout out to that brother for for um you know for for recovering and, and fighting the good fight and it sounds like he's on on a pathway of of better health you know um but i looked at that and i'm like you know they want trying to make this all salacious and talking about you really they trying to figure out how many times they was getting it in you know but i'm like funny out here performing community service to to get that to get and keep that that you know keep him up okay <laughs> and the way i know it is because she admitted to having to have a hard conversation with him and, you know, when we as women get to the place where we have to have a hard conversation about the relationship and the way it's going and what's happened, you know, when we have to have that hard conversation and, and in our minds we're putting you on notice that this ain't going to work, this is over, that's how you know the D, low-key, the, the D is underperforming, you know. I hate to say it that way. But, I mean, that's just real talk because women, you know, especially women of a particular age, I think Fonny is like 52, 53 years old. You know, after you get to a certain age in life, you know, and I'm not that old, but, you know, and not that that's old at all, but I'm just saying that, you know, once you get to a particular age in life, you know, for women, we not letting good D go. We just not, you know, we always keeping that door open because good D, believe it or not, is hard to find. It really is. And, you know, when I say good D, I'm not talking about, oh, how good he looked. You know, oh, does he look good? Does he look good in a three-piece suit? Does he wear that well? How much money he got? I'm not talking about that kind of you know, I'm not, I'm not talking about that. That, that is not a measure at all of good D. Okay. Let's just put that out on the table. I'm talking about good D that is that, that there's like no question that is good. Okay. I, you know, I'm just, I, I, I'm just very particular because I feel like women signal to men in society that you got to have a good job, you got to have money, you got to have, you know, all of these things that are preferences that that for some of us are necessities, you know, for us to even give a brother the time of day, like women kind of signal a number of different things, but none of that equates to good D, okay? When I say good D, I'm talking about how nasty are you? Can you make the pussy scream? Can you make the pussy cream? Okay, that's 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 the kind of good D I'm talking about. I'm not talking about making me scream. Can you make the pussy scream? That is good D, ladies and gentlemen. And so I say all of that to say, okay, I could talk about this topic forever and a day, okay? I say all of that to say, um... Bonnie was paying a lot, okay? She was paying for a lot, and I feel like she she paid because of the nature of 
the work that she does and because like I said her, at any given moment her finances can be brought under scrutiny and you know when you're dealing with that kind of a situation where at any given point in time your finances can be brought under scrutiny the last thing you want the last thing you want is to get caught up financially in a personal relationship with with some someone who things could seem a little um the lines could be a little blurred okay so i don't know how much of this testimony is true okay um it doesn't come down to whether or not it's true or not it comes down to what can and cannot be proven right and so her and nathan wade are signaling that they only dealt in cash and my understanding from having friends who are attorneys it's not uncommon for lawyers and and different types of attorneys to have cash you know it's just not an uncommon thing for most of us we don't carry cash like i i don't carry cash i don't even carry cash a lot of times when i'm traveling although um i carry like local currency cash but i don't i'm not really big on carrying cash i just don't really like doing that okay um but i will say that this is really fascinating because what she's signaling and she said it in one of the clips that you know she worked so hard i feel to prove to him that she's an equal that she could pay her own way you know her daddy pay for everything she don't have to uh to pay for for everything for herself i'm gonna tell you right now i'm not trying to prove that to to not one man okay <laughs> I'm not trying to prove it to a man. I will tell you as um as a woman who, you know, I was my 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 father, my dad, my daddy, his only child. And when I tell you God rest his soul, when he was here on earth, he spoiled me to no end. So I'm not you know, I'm not um one of those women that's going to try to prove that um somehow i'm equal to a man because we're different we're just different um i am so thankful that i am a woman i do not desire <laughs> to be a man or the man in any kind of relationship i enjoy uh being a woman and i just feel like um the question comes up often uh and you know it could depend on where you are at in the particular relationship you're you're in when you're involved with you know someone of the opposite sex but i'd like to know do you feel that women should share in the cost of tr paying for travel vacations vacations whatever you want to call it uh should we be contributing to those experiences um i would disagree with how fawny did it because it it you know it seems like she paid for everything okay and when you are a woman and you're paying for everything i have to wonder is this man even really feeling you like that i mean and if he ain't really feeling you like why are you wasting your time you know um that kind of I don't know that just to me <clears throat> that's the only problem i had with fawny um her testimony and her statement in terms of she's his equal and you know she's gonna pay her way and that's why she would always give him his money back you know that's very strange to me because you know i've had men who have taken me out here and there and everywhere and i've never reimbursed anybody <laughs> like i just i don't that's what i'm saying it has to be because of the office she's in because i just don't see her moving like that like fanny is not an ugly woman she's not unattractive you know she is she does not have to pay like that you know now she might be dating the wrong kind of man if she got to pay for everything you know what i mean because i'm just like if you if, if a, for women i just feel like if you're with a man who expects you to pay for everything 
that is a sign that that's not the right person for you um, because that's just too much of a burden on a woman to have to do. I've certainly not experienced that that I can recall, you know, because I'm just like, if, if I'm paying like that, then, you know, we literally are just friends. Like, of course, when it's a friendship kind of thing, of course, like, I don't have a problem. I don't expect a man to pay for anything for me. That's not my expectation as a woman. Um, I've never really expected it. It's just been something that, I don't know, it's like, I don't even think about it. Like most of the men that I've ever, I've, I've gone out with have just done it. Even when it comes to like, just guy friends, like I've had guy friends who just pick up the tab, you know? And I'm like, really particular about even that like if they pick up the tab once I'll pick up the tab the next time so I definitely understand Fonny on that but as a woman having to pay for everything or most things I'm not even looking at you like that like it's just like that to me just kills it like it's like mm -mm, no and so if she didn't get there because he couldn't deliver um, and I don't know if she was signaling that maybe he had prostate cancer or testicular cancer. There was some type of cancer that dealt with the lower region of his body that likely impacted um, their sexual interaction, impacted it and limited because she talked about the claims being ridiculous, you know. So I just think that, um, you know, it, it's very interesting how much of this hearing is dissecting and going in depth into travel and i'm interested in in watching more and seeing what other things are are uncovered as a result of uh their their vacations and uh their travel and you know let her tell it let him tell it she paid for everything okay she she wasn't he wasn't paying for nothing if anything she overpaid because she said she did it big for his 50th birthday party i'm like girl you doing way too much funny way too much so i see why he wasn't her number one choice um i just hope that at 52 53 years old that that Fonny pulls it together. I actually kind of feel sorry for her because of the fact that, you know, she she said that she didn't know how lonely her life would be as the DA. Like her life is threatened regularly and often. And that is a very difficult thing for a woman to go through, especially if she doesn't have a man, especially facing that without a man in her life. So I don't know. I just will say this. If you have not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe. If you have not clicked the like button, click the like button. It's free. It's easy. And if you have not joined us on one of our travel experiences, take a look at the playback. Find out which one you'd like to join us on. And we'd love to have and host you on one of our future travel experiences. I hope you enjoy, enjoy the broadcast, ladies and gentlemen. I will try to come on and do things more like face-to-face -face live, but I really like the audio experience. It's so easy for me. A lot of times, like right now, it's really cold here, uh, and a lot of times I just like to bundle up and, you know, have my hoodie on, my glasses, and everything so I don't like to really be on camera like that um but you know it's good to come on from time to time and I definitely uh utilize the camera on other platforms so hey why not um but again until next time ladies and gentlemen and stay tuned all right I will chop it up with y'all later